Hi, my name is Chris Ryan. Welcome to the Forest Vardon and welcome to the final video in this series about the myths that surround the golf game and the golf swing. Today we're talking about something which is really important and that's the ball flight laws and trying to explain what creates the curve on the golf ball and maybe why your balls don't finish exactly where they should. So welcome to video four, the final video in this series covering the myths that surround the golf swing and the golf game. This one I think is possibly one of the most important for you to really understand. Um, I'm going to call it a myth, but maybe it's a little bit more of a misunderstanding. And we're talking about the ball flight laws. So for us as coaches, that those ball flight laws are very simply the laws that govern how the ball flies through the air. And we'll talk in a little bit um, about the, the myth or the misconception, but really that's such an important part, um, certainly for me as a coach to understand that, but certainly for the players that I coach to get them to appreciate, you know, what's actually happening at impact to create the ball flight that they've just seen. So if a golfer stands here, let's say with a driver, they hit a shot and it's got some sort of curve on it. That could be left to right, right to left, and it finishes somewhere, let's say the right rough. It's really important that that golfer appreciates what's actually happened at impact to create that ball flight. Because if that information that they have is incorrect or wrong, quite simply that's going to lead to the incorrect fix and the incorrect fix leads to poorer shots and we just get this kind of vicious circle of kind of tweaking and changing the result isn't as we want we change again and we just start to get almost a downward spiral of making goal swing changes not getting the desired result making some more changes etc etc so the myth here and we're going to talk about this in a little bit more detail but the myth here is that the golf ball finishes where the golf club is pointing so it would be quite common for me to see a golfer, you know, stand here with a driver. Let's say I'm aiming at the green in the distance. My ball finishes, you know, right of the target, let's say in that right rough. And the misconception is that, well, that must have been where the golf club was pointing because that's where the ball has finished. And absolutely, that, that kind of would be logical. It would make a lot of sense. If I was brand new to the game and I saw my ball finish off the right of the target, absolutely, I would automatically assume that that's where the golf club was pointing. So a lot of these kind of misconceptions have, uh, you know, maybe come around because over the years, the ball flight laws and what we understand about the ball flight laws has changed a little bit. So let's go through two examples uh, and we'll make this a little bit clearer. We used to believe and we used to get told that if I was to swing my golf club, let's say towards the left hand side of this hole, and when I was swinging my golf club there, the golf club was pointing, let's say, to the right rough. So I'm swinging to the left of the target and the club is pointing to the right of the target. We were told that that would create a ball which started where I was swinging and curved and landed where the club face was pointing. So you can see that kind of ball flight there. That's what we were told, um, well, not me personally, because I went through my training a little bit later, but years ago, that's what people were told. So wherever you swing the golf club is where the ball will start, and wherever it curves to is where the club face was pointing. Unfortunately, that information is incorrect, but a lot of golfers still believe that, and this is the myth that we're talking about. So how does impact affect the ball flight? Well, for the purposes of this video, we can pretty much safely say that the golf ball will start where my club face was pointing. Okay, that's really, really important to know. Wherever my golf club is pointing at contact is where that golf ball will start. So if my ball started in line with this flag, that is exactly where my club face was pointing. If my ball started left, that is where my club face was pointing. If it started right, again, that is where my club face was pointing. The club path will then curve the golf ball. So let's go through another example. Let's say that when I swing the golf club, my club is swinging excessively to the left of this flag here, maybe towards these trees. That's why my club is swinging. As I make contact with the golf ball, the club face is pointing, let's say directly at the flag. Now what we've just said here is that the ball will start where the face is pointing. So if my face is pointing at the flag, that is where the ball will start off. That's where it will take off. That's where it will launch. But because I swung the club to the left of that, the ball is going to curve away from that club face. It's going to curve excessively to the right and possibly even miss that target to the right. So on that particular example there, you can see how I would have missed my fairway to the right-hand side. That could well have been by 30, 40, 50 yards. 
However, my club face was actually pointing right down the middle, exactly at my flag. So the club face causes the ball to start somewhere. Once that ball has started somewhere, it's the path that will create the curve on that golf ball. So the face sends the golf ball, the path bends the golf ball. And that's really, really important for us to understand as a concept. So let's go through now a couple of examples of what that might look like. So we've now got a really good understanding about what creates the curve that's on a golf ball. Let's show you how you can use that information to actually intentionally shape shots. Because this is something that I would encourage golfers to do. Even if you don't feel that you are at a level where you're going to go on the course and shape shots maybe into fairways or flags, for me the actual process of doing it in practice really just helps you appreciate what happens in impacts to create those curves and for me it helps a lot of golfers during practice. So let's say I was trying to hit a, a big left to right fade down towards the green that's in the distance. What we've just said here is that the club face is going to control where that ball starts. So I need to establish roughly where I want my ball to start. So I'm going to pick somewhere left of that bunker as my start line. So absolutely when my club makes contact with the ball that's where the golf club needs to be pointing. But if I want my ball to curve to the right and finish more towards the middle of that green, I actually need my club to be swinging more to the left of that starting point. So here's where I can now build my setup around that, that, those, uh, those pieces of information. So I'm actually going to aim my body, and I'm going to try and hit this on a quite a severe left to right curve just to kind of demonstrate that for you. So I'm actually going to kind of point my feet quite a long way left and you can see how, you can see here my alignment is, you know, way, way left. It's almost through the middle of those trees over there. Then I'm actually going to point the club face towards where I want that ball to start, which we said was just kind of left of that bunker. So what we've established now is my club face is pointing where I want the ball to start. But due to my setup and my alignment, my golf club is going to swing to the left of that club face. That means that my ball will start where I uh, intend it to and the curve will happen and it will move to the right of the target. So let me go ahead and do that for you. So there's my alignment into those left trees. Club face is pointing much more to the right of me, but left of the green. Okay, ball starts left, curves back. And on this hole, if I was trying to hit that fade, I'd be absolutely fine with that. That's perfectly in position. And there was my left to right fade. So if I had the wrong information, I was trying to get the ball to finish there by pointing my club face there. Absolutely, I would hit a terrible shot. My ball would finish way, way right of target. That sort of poor shot then makes me feel I've done something wrong, etc., etc. And we start to go down this, let's say, this kind of downward spiral of trying to fix the wrong fault, if you like. And then we, we really start to see poor results out on the golf course. So understanding ball flight laws is absolutely key to your development as a golfer. And ultimately, if you are going to start to move the ball out on the golf course, left to right, right to left, this information is absolutely key for you to understand. Just one little disclaimer. When we're hitting the longer clubs, the woods, the drivers, the three woods, the rescues, the ball flight laws, unfortunately, are only applicable if you hit the middle of the golf club. If you start to miss and you start to hit towards the toe or the heel, all bets are off, I'm afraid. The ball can do different things based on the impact location. So if I produce a swing, which might hit that ball on a right to left shot, a draw shot, if I hit towards the heel, I can easily see my ball move left to right. So we have to be monitoring strike as we're practicing curving the ball through the air. So the myth that the ball is finishing where the club face was pointing has been around for a long, long time. As coaches, the information is getting much better out there from us to you, but there are still golfers, unfortunately, who believe that wherever that ball finished on the golf course is where the club face was pointing. As we've established in the video, that is not the case. If you can improve your knowledge, your concept can change. I definitely think it's going to help you improve your golf game. So that is it. Four videos covering and looking at some of the common myths that I see around the golf game and around the golf swing. These are myths. If you do hear anybody trying to pass you this information, trying to get you to intentionally hit down on the irons or things along those lines, then absolutely make sure you take it with a pinch of salt. You now hopefully know better. You can uh, choose which bits of information you take on board and I guarantee you that is gonna help you in your long-term and short-term development of your goal game. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your views. Uh, love to hear your comments on what you thought of this video series. The plan is to do more video series just like this one, one each month covering a different topic 
um, you know, hopefully just get me, allowing me to go a little bit more in depth with the information that I pass across to you and hopefully it allows you to understand the, uh, the topic a little bit more in depth and helps you when you play and practice. Thank you, as I said, for watching. Really appreciate it. Usual stuff is down below. Comments box, like button. There's also a link to subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click that button. It means you'll get access to all my videos and there's now four going up each and every week. Thank you again. We'll see you soon.